Welcome to Think Big for Africa podcast. On this podcast, we will bring you interesting conversations with local, national, and international African leaders from all works of life, home and abroad. Leaders who are doing their bits to progress Africa's development. Conversation topics will range from education, science, health, leadership, politics, business, and many other global issues. Conversations about everything that concerns Africa's development. Africa has so many wonderful achievers worldwide, and this is exactly what we will bring to you on Think Big for Africa podcast. Stay tuned. Hello. Welcome to the Think Big for Africa podcast. My name is Ekene Banye your host. Today I have uh, a wonderful gentleman in the tourism tourism sector. Like you know, uh, I'm very, I'm a big, big uh, fan of tourism in Africa because I, I believe that, that uh, we have so many interesting things that we as Africans need to explore and so many that so many other people from the from the world would like to explore so i'm bringing all these uh tourist experts to you because i want you to start exploring the tourism in africa now my my guest today is called uh, michael balogun michael how are you? I'm fine, and you, and thank you for having I'm me good. here. I'm good, I'm good. So, uh, see, uh, today, uh, Michael is on the road, you know. He was supposed to oh. talk to me from his office or home, but uh, he, ha- he has been stuck in traffic. So, we'll do it today. He's in, a, in his car driving, and then we'll do it, okay? Michael. Tell my audience a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you very much, Ekene, for this opportunity. And I hope I'm very audible too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, can, I can hear you clearly, yes. Yeah, yeah. my name is Michael Balogo, uh, a Lagosian, let me put it that way, our yeah. aquatic city of Lagos. I'm born and raised in Lagos. I've been on, on the mainland, let me say, from maybe age three to four. And lived in the UK a while back, moved back in 2008. So we don't still have our own accent like you people over there. So we manage our Nigeria inherited accent. So I'm Nigerian all true. Like you can oh, yeah, me. right. That's why <laughs> people say, but your, your voice tells me out easily. So um, I think part, part of my journey into the tourism sector will be um, growing up the values, the things you know, we used to see on TV. Yeah. For me, it was the Robin Hood. Mm. That was one of my favorite programs. Okay. Coming back from school, five o'clock, you want to tune your LTV eight those days. Yeah. To watch Robin <laughs> Hood and all that. So for me, growing up, I, I, I honest I honestly thought all that Robin Hood thing was a myth. Well, it was just like a story and all that. Not yeah. until I had the opportunity, and that will be the first official place I visited as a tourist when I came to England. Okay. I went to that Robin Hood castle and I was like, wow, so this thing So this thing is real. <laughs> and then, you know, I started saying like, okay, the day we went, there are loads of tourists there. We went on the castle tour. We used the periscope to look down into the city and blah, blah. And I talked to myself, I said, you know, this thing too is achievable in Nigeria now. We have yes. the Umoro. Yes. We have the Akari game. How come these people can manage and sell this as a as a business? Let's put it that way, as a business. Because if you look around you, every everybody that comes to England to me, if it's not about retail, it's about tourism, hospitality. Yeah. So if they can sell it easily out there, I thought about it like we could replicate this same thing in Nigeria. Mm. You have the Bendy bus, the double decker buses. We have the downfalls. Yes. We have the Molo. <laughs> 
<laughs> and you know, you know the story that goes on inside the mode where you yeah. can find anything you're looking for from <laughs> a, 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 a street vendor to a pharmacist yeah. on the yeah. bus to somebody selling gala. You know, it's, that, <laughs> it's just like an old drama traveling on the Lagos Mall back in those yeah. days. Yeah, yeah. You have all these things. You see the iconic uh, red phone boots. And you know, when you put all these things together, it is something we can replicate. Yeah. So moving back to Nigeria, I worked two years with uh, British Council. But inside, I knew I had to sell this, mm. you know, this story. So mm. I started on the trip advisor level. I started going solo trips to all these destinations, restaurants, yeah. you go to Yellow Chili, you write about it, take pictures, and post it on TripAdvisor. And, you know, friends will be like, wow, where is this new joint? Or oh, this TripAdvisor um, thing I'm doing. I'm reviewing all these places. Then you go to the local booker, the roadside booker, Mama yeah. Oyo, yeah. and then you see them slaughtering the Ogufi, and you find, you know, corporate, <laughs> corporate uh, workers, staff with cars, Waiting to eat freshly yeah. uh, pounded yam, and then you write about <laughs> it like it's not just about the 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 luxury restaurant. Now we are talking about no, the roadside. No. The woman selling, you know, the woman selling puff puff to. There was a time I read an article by uh, Tony Lumelu. He said there's a woman on uh, Adenir or on, on the island. I think uh, that somewhere of ne next to his, uh, his, his former office. Yes. Yes, yeah. and he said there's this woman that sells one of the best bolier and epa in mm. Nigeria. He mm. said it. <laughs> so when you look at a billionaire talking about the street food, it says a lot. Yeah. So these are some of the things we need to celebrate. Oh, the Mamati may be selling of puff on the road. These are what tourists would normally do. Mm. We don't have to wait till we sell shawarma or pizza or all that. Let's celebrate, you know, from the grassroots upwards to the to the luxury brands. So for mm. me, I, I picked up from the trip advisor, then I had like 50, it grew to 500, now it's over 100,000 on re trip advisor. And then if you really notice how trip advisor works, in case you want to go to Nigeria or any other country in the world, you go on trip advisor, you search for places to go, nightlife, then accommodation, logistics, then you find people you know, selling up their own reviews of the services they use, where to yeah. go, yeah. what to do. So from there, I just felt, why don't you turn your passion into paycheck? Mm. Mm. So from the mm. tours, people will now be like, oh, I have a friend coming in with a family of five. Maybe you should take them around Lekki, show them around while they're in Lagos for five days. Yeah. Then it became a business. So officially 2014, May 14, uh, May 12, I registered at the CAC. That's the Corporate Affairs Commission yeah. mm. as Extreme Tours to Nigeria. And interesting like say, that's, that's good that's good the rest is history that's very very good i'm happy to hear that that you are able to turn your passion into a business and uh, yeah. i want to encourage many many people many of, of our people to do just that see because a lot of people complain that they want to start a business but they didn't they didn't know what to what to what to do well this is well, it start uh, a business, a passion, and turn it into a business. Okay. No, so t t t tell me, you see, in the last 18 months, uh, the world has been, uh, been, uh, been on mostly on, the lo on lockdown. You see, the, the pandemic has affected everything in the world, especially tourism. So, how has it affected Nigeria or African tourism? Well, um, I have to say, yeah, I can, I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. Um, you know, um, during the lockdown, um, during the lockdown, I can say um, the travel and tourism industry was the hardest hit around the world, mm. not just Nigeria, globally. Yeah. You know, because tourism travels that sector deals with people movements. Yeah. Going from one point to another. And, you know, with the COVID, the whole world shut their borders. Airlines yeah. were grounded. They lost staff. They lost um, revenues. Hotels were empty. So it, the, the whole process of the lockdown 
was a was was something nobody prepared for. Mm. No sector. It got very bad. It got very bad. Um, in between all that uh, drama, I think some opportunities, you know, came up. It came up. I, I think the COVID was like a reset button for the world to say, yeah, we have to do something different from the normal, you know, a norm we've been used to. Now we can have this kind of conversation. Maybe back then to be in a studio. Yeah. Now people are working remotely in Lagos, something that it is not uh, part of our culture. Because mm. like I work most times from home and neighbors that don't really understand, the average Nigerian looks at a young entrepreneur in Nigeria and like, he doesn't go out as early as 6 30 when yeah. he's tired of the suit. He must be into fraud. Yes. He must be drinking <laughs> oh, yeah, oh. Yeah, This man is yeah. not. It's always at home, it doesn't go out. Mm. But mm. now the world is understanding that do we really need to be yeah. able to? And, you know, and that's what caused um, a lot of congestion in Lagos. The things that you need you need to even do over the phone with, you know, 10 minutes of conversation, Yeah, you will be communi- commuting for like three, four hours, mm. Mm. all mm. in the process of people still want to do physical meetings. Well, uh, see, but now you can have remote business meetings and conferences yes. without leaving the comforts of your home. Yeah. See, the, the, the pandemic has uh, opened our eyes all over the world that there are so many things we do face-to-face that we can do remotely. Okay? That's, oh. that's true. Now, I, I still know some, well, Nigerians who rather do things face-to-face, even with the lockdown. Hello. A lot. Yeah. So we, even though we have gained uh, remote working, well, there's still some things, especially, especially tourism. Okay. I can't, yeah. I can't, I can't uh, be in a tour on the phone or on, uh, online. I want to visit <laughs> somewhere. So see, this is where it, it affects your business and your industry so much because you need your, vis- your, your, your customers to visit. You know? If they don't, if well, they don't well, visit, I'll... you guys don't get any money. And uh, see, the, the lockdown shut everything up. The, the next question I'll, I'll ask, See, because many people don't know how big the tourism industry in Africa is, how much it's worth. So give, give me a, a view about the benefits and the monetary value of tourism in Nigeria and Africa, if you, if you know? Yeah, well, like you said earlier, the, the shutdown for the old uh, travel industry was huge, huge, huge. Uh, massive losses that every other um, companies and even apart from the global um, um, money loss, even companies are to fold Mm. Some airlines lost stuff. But, you know, tourism on its global scale is like um, a $7.6 trillion market globally. Wow. And I would say for Africa as a continent, you'd be looking at over $40 billion or more. Because, you know, the 54 African countries, everybody with their own um, yeah. unique uh, packages from safari to luxury to, you know, carnivals. You can't even rule that one out. And in Nigeria, it's the same. The, the monetary value, it's, it's enormous. Even though the government don't realize this, this is like a little drop in the ocean, mm. like maybe well, it's, you know, 5% of um, the GDP mm. to the economy. But well, if you well, really look at it, 5% one, of one out of GDP seven is not small. Is hospitality. You see, it's not. There are some countries, this is all they, this is all they rely on. Mm-hmm. There are some African um, countries that, their landlocked, the only thing they rely on is just tourism. Yeah. Safari, Kenya, and all that. That is yeah. all they rely on. 
no gold, no oil, no whatever. But for us in Nigeria, you know, the government still don't really see the big picture here. But with the COVID, I think they're beginning to understand that this low hanging fruit are supposed to yeah. be, you know, invested and invested in. So now a lot of them are showing interest. The stakeholders are coming up. We're having Zoom meetings, stakeholders forum, work summits, just to show there's a way to to harness these potentials we have with this COVID. Because to be honest, the the global um, research has been shown like tourism will not really kick up till 2023 yes. globally. Yeah. Yeah. So for now. Every other, uh, every and, other country and exp- is selling domestic tourism. Especially, especially you guys in Africa who unfortunately are not vaccinated. Oh, well, we are in the process. A lot of people are signing up because, you know, now it's getting to this point. Like, um, it's almost like they talk about um, the vaccine passport. Mm. At the end of the day, Nigerians are known to travel. We yeah. love to travel. Yeah, it's almost like taking our O and B parties well, away. A lot of see, people I, I'm not slip into depression. I'm, I'm not uh, worried about uh, the people who travel. You see, the people who travel will get vaccinated, but the majority of our citizens mm. who do not travel. They, See, this, this issue about uh, an anti-vax groups that uh-huh. many Africans have bought into without even understanding the origin and the, the political stand that they're making. They have bought into it and that's, that's going to be, that's gonna be dif- difficult to to get enough of our people vaccinated. Anyway, that, that's another story, <laughs> you know, but it, it affects your, your industry, you know? A lot. Because a lot. people from Europe will not, will not want to travel to Africa when they, when they know the majority of people they will encounter in Africa will, will most likely not be vaccinated. You're right. So that's that's it. That's it. That's the, the issue with your industry. You know. You're right. So I'm b- because most of the, of the people who work in your industry are low paid paid people. Okay. So uh, unlike people who who work in banks, the banks will demand that they all get vaccinated, and in fact, the banks will facilitate, facilitate the, the vaccine, vaccination for them. Can your industry do the same? No. No, because the, even the process of being vaccinated is more of a legal issue. There's something going on in, with the governor of, um, what's the name, um, Obaseki. Mm. That he, I think he made okay. a pronouncement I, I like, mm-hmm. In those states, like people without vaccination, will not be allowed to go to parties, churches, and <laughs> okay, yeah. and uh, and the and the country throughout this case, like you don't have that legal rights. Mm. You don't have the legal yeah. rights to say people will be. And if you go on that level, that means they will tell you without a vaccine uh, certificate, you can't even fly locally. Mm. A lot of businesses too will lose money. Even churches will fold up. So technically. I, I don't see that problem going away for now. Mm. Well, I I, I, I I wouldn't want our government to be uh, be forceful. Okay, it's more about education. Okay, to okay. let our people understand that hey, they need they need to do it because. Before now, before the, the social media era, we all, I'm sure you as a person, have taken more than five vaccinations from birth. Oh, definitely. Exactly. Did your, par- did your parents complain? 
No. They were happy yeah. that you had the opportunity to get vaccinated. Okay? Now... We have to bring in the trust issue here. Well, the people don't even trust the government anymore. Well, well, and the social see, media is not helping matters. Exactly. See? I have a 14-year-old son in London who told me that a lot of people are not going to take this because there's a caveat on the vaccination that in case you take it and something goes wrong, you can sue anybody. Oh, come on. You can hold on. See? And then, you know, people put all these kind of stories on social media. Mm -hmm. And now the, the issue of even trying to make some believe that the COVID exists is even difficult. <laughs> then you are not telling them something they don't even believe in. <laughs> then they should get vaccinated for it. It's almost like trying to tell them it's going to snow in Lagos tomorrow. <laughs> See, So oh. a lot of awareness campaign needs to go back to yeah. the grassroots. Yeah. People well, still feel you can rub alcohol on your lips, stay in the sun for three hours a day, mm. and you're you're fine. Mm. See, so it's, this, a, it's going to be this, a long process. Yes, it 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 will be, and for your industry, it will affect you guys so much that uh, it is already. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is like I tell I tell a friend yesterday to even go to Ghana. Mm. My cost you a sum of two hundred k now yeah. just for COVID alone. Yeah, without your yeah. tickets, without your accommodation, mm -hmm. and then you have a family of four. How do you go? How do you pay? Yeah, so that's why a lot of the countries out there they are promoting their own domestic tourism, yeah, because they know a lot of people won't be flying in for Christmas. Mm -hmm. So it's better to start using our numbers. We are a population of 220 million in Lagos State they know we are over 20 million. So why don't we become our own? Exactly. Supply. Ex exactly. So this is an, another benefit that this yeah. pandemic has uh, created for your. Okay. So local local tourism is it's something that you guys need to promote a lot. You know. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're doing. Nobody's yeah. going anywhere. Charity begins at home. That's the the thing we are selling now. Mm. I was on the, a friend was like, he wanted to book a package this morning now. And I said, okay, let me go on one of these airline, Ibome, to be precise. And I checked the date for the Christmas and the all six were booked out. Wow. Booked out. Because people are not traveling. Nobody's going outside this country. Like 80% will be in Nigeria. So okay. the mad rush has started already. Resorts are getting almost 40 to 50 percent booked out already mm. in just mm. the first well, days of again, again I, I will say this see this is this is where the 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 trouble will start now without a lot of people being vaccinated for this for this uh virus i hope the 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 large number of people who are booking tours, look at tours, will not now spread whatever they have around. See, this is this is the issue. <laughs> yeah, but because because we are COVID compliant, just like I don't go anywhere. Okay. Oh, very good. Mask. And we still insist on our activities with our clients that okay. no mask, no entry. Okay. 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 And everybody is still, you know, for you to want to go on it, so definitely you must have with your options. Like, yeah. Am I going to be exposing my family, my kids to well, COVID? Well, well, with, with some people who don't even believe we, that the, the COVID them. is true, is true, is real. That's the issue. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> we still have some people like that. We still have people that we see they are not wearing the mask. There are some religious groups that don't even wear the mask in the church. So how do you protect yourself from, from such people when they want to go on a tour with you? Mm. Well, see... And you uh, can't turn well, them down or turn them away, but you just... You know, we need, we, need, we need to just keep educating people about this. Yeah. We need to keep educating people. You know what you were talking about? The, the, the process of Will people still travel like before? Will people still travel remotely? Look at what happened during the lockdown. A lot of companies made fortune mm. from Zoom yeah. to Jeff Bezos, Amazon, yeah. to Netflix. Yeah. You know, a lot of Nigerians have grown 
into Netflix now that they don't even go to the movies anymore. <laughs> they don't go to the movies movie anymore. which which was a, a late comma in Nigeria is now exactly Netflix is now okay. <laughs> so why can't I just turn off the lights, get a popcorn and sit around with my friends and do our own cinema at home? So that's what I'm saying. Like there's a, a whole lot of opportunities came with the COVID. And mm. for tourism, I have been trying to, you know, stand on this mountain to tell them well, there's a lot of opportunities yes, now. Lo- local tourism now a lot. because they can't they can't travel internationally. Look at tourism. You guys had the opportunity to build on to build the local tourism industry. And that's yes. what's happening now. Yes, yes. A lot of a lot of resorts are popping up in Lagos by the by the days. Mm. Okay, a month ago, yeah, should it be a month ago? Yeah, one of the biggest brands opened their new hotel in Nigeria, Marriott. Okay, okay. that's like a forty billion naira investment. Who would ever think somebody would pump such an amount during the yeah, COVID era? A long, a long because there's down. a need. There's a need for it now. Yeah. There's a need for it, just like in the real estate. There, there's a lot of need. People are migrating. People need to, you know, put their head somewhere. They need accommodation. So it's tourism. People travel from here to Abuja locally. You need somewhere to stay. Fact, you need logistics. Yeah, this, this is All a these things. Will, this is a question I, 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 I even thought to ask you. See, in Europe, for example. I, if I want to go to Italy, there are all kinds of accommodation, okay, from bread and brisk bed and breakfast to three three star to five star uh, hotels. Now. I don't know what is going on in Nigeria. I haven't, I, I haven't been there for a while. You should visit. Well, I, 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 I will. <laughs> I will very soon. See, do we, are we building the, the kind of accommodation that will to attract all kinds of people to the tur- tourism, tourism sector? Because they may be a family who are not able to pay for a five star uh, hotel, but they want they want to come to Lagos for a few days to okay. see something. Do you, does Lagos have quote unquote, unquote bread and breakfast accommodations? Well, I don't know. You, you know, um, I'm happy. I'm happy you brought this question. On. When um, we started talking to Nigeria, my own unique um, motive was more for the low-income earners. Okay. You know, typical Nigeria social uh, with the status quo is Dubai, mm. South Africa, UK, Yankee. How many low-income earners can afford that? Very, so very. I looked at that. I entered that market with those people in mind. Okay. Like if a, a, a school teacher with a family of four should be able to do a tour in Lagos without you know breaking the bank or going to rob the bank or anything. Look at those days when we were growing up. Everybody that couldn't go to London for vacation, we went to a Papa Amusement Park. Oh yeah. A Papa Amusement Park was for everybody. Yeah. There was no um the there was no middle class or rich people. Everybody was just there. Then we left that. We came back to LTVs. They did all the fun fair. The Father Christmas Village was there. So when you look at all these um, scenarios now, how many families up to now can still do all those kind of trips yeah. abroad? Do, do, have do, do we have those parks? Any, do we have those parks any, anymore? I think a proper amusement park. They try to um, get it back in top shape. Wow. I hope they do. But like we have some private parks, then we have the the, the 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 corporate ones as well. So like in a place like Omo Resort, with a, with as much as as little as thirty five thousand, a family of five can have a wonderful day out. Okay. I mean, and so they have all those kind of packages, pack gold, platinum, and mm. silver. So with thirty five thousand, a family of five can do 
go karting, face painting, a okay. meal, so so swimming. So, so you have all those categories. Yes, and but, you have but, accommodations for that level too. Okay, but can can a family from Ife, okay, they don't have uh, a, a, a family mem members in Lagos, but they want yeah. to come to Lagos and see some some sites in Lagos, and they want to stay for okay. two days. Do they have accommodation? Yes, they do. We have we have um, bread and breakfast sort of arrangements, okay. even on the island. But people don't know. You know, like Steve Jobs said, yeah, what you don't show I'm, people, I'm, people I'm don't asking. buy. There's a place in front. Uh, it, it's close to Okota Shopping Complex. It's called um, Travel Budget Hotel. Okay. You get a lovely design room as cheap as 10,000 naira. Interesting. And the way it is even um, located is in front of the mega chicken. So it's something you can cross from your hotel and have your okay. meal. Okay. Here. So it's and like a like a, so the, like a motel. Yeah, like a motel. Yeah. And it is like any traveling abroad, Wi-Fi, the kitchenette, everything. Good. So if I mean, even there's some real estates now doing uh, service apartments. They are the prime ones of um, a quad Atlantic of 150,000 a night. Mm. And then there's still hotels on the island in VI, I can tell you for free. Like I still 25,000 a night. Nice. And you know, because of, of um, the, the, the partnership we've started building with some of these hotel owners and resorts, we try to tell them, like, see, the number of games is what you guys should be looking yeah. at. Yeah, right, rather than make, make the price high up, bring it down. Exactly. And Make it down, a lot of people will be in it. How many people can afford a one fifty thousand or one seventy thousand a night at the George Hotel? How many people really? But when you look at the people that can afford the twenty thousand a night with a complimentary breakfast, you have a deal. Yeah, you have a deal. So you you can get a hotel for ten thousand naira. You can get for fifteen thousand on the island. Interesting. That's good. That's good. So that's the best way to sell domestic tourism. If you can't make it affordable, then what's the whole point of all these exercises we've been doing? Yeah. Yeah. But somebody will rather tell you that, why would I pay 1.2 million in Nigeria for five days when I can go to Maldives mm. or go to Dubai mm. for a mm. week? So we have to make it competitive for people to think, instead of taking this ad currency to Dubai, why don't I spend it in Lagos? Yeah. Yeah, um, we we say it's it's something we need to understand uh, as a people. See, uh, taking money from your community and pouring it into other communities or other countries uh, is not it's not uh, the best way to build the sense. economy of your community. You know, see be before you take money out of your community you must allow it to to travel multiple times yeah. within your community before you allow it to go out and we need to okay, let you're know. right we need you're to right. learn like that. What, um i need to call like a um, couple of days ago there was a statistic that came out from arise channels um one of the um analysts analysts and he said over $20 billion within the last 10 years have left Nigeria on education. Yeah. $20 billion yeah. Dollars in 10 years. And the same with medical tourism, with same yeah. with outbound tourism. Oh, wow. And then when I see Nigerians complaining about, oh, the service of this place is poor, this place is poor. And I'm like, if you guys spend half of what you spend in Dubai, in Lagos, in Nigeria, yeah. I think a lot of all these resorts, hotel owners would have upgraded their own facilities as well. Yes. Yes, that's true. So you can't keep taking all the forex out of the country and then expecting the country to grow in infrastructure level for hotel owners, for resort owners. How do they upgrade? Yeah. See, is the all, 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 this, all this comes from education starting from government. Okay? Government need to understand that they need to put incentives, incentives to build 
in by building infrastructure and uh, to sure. allow different uh, sectors of the economy to grow. Okay, and right. then give uh, in incentives for for business owners to build the, their own sectors to attract more clients, local clients. You know, so th these are things. I'm happy you're even bringing up these incentive incentive um, issues. Like for me, if I was in the government after this COVID, what I would have suggested was for hospitality industries, travel industry, mm. they're giving you the rest of the year or another extra one year tax free. Oh, yeah. it, it, oh, they should, they should automatically. But they're not. <laughs> they're not. It's almost like people are trying to recover and then they're, they're still facing multiple taxation. How do you expect them to, to even get back on their feet? You know, when we, you turn on, on um, international news and you're getting messages like, oh, the government gave so, so, so billions of dollars to business owners as policies. They reduced this. You know, it brings joy to your heart, but that home is like, they need to even see what people are going through. I, I've had friends who have closed shop, moved to something else because they just couldn't get the heat of the COVID. They don't even know where to start from somewhere into depression and then you wake up and somebody is still trying to tax your business mm. that is wow. yet to even recover fully wow so these are the things the government needs to understand that for this thing to survive for businesses to go on they need to you know relax on trying to just milk the, the business owners for now well these are things uh fact these are some of the things I, I will discuss when I have a, a de development developmental economist to to on my podcast, and I want one because uh, these issues are crucial to build our economy. So uh, I saw on your LinkedIn page a few days ago about the passing of a Nigerian uh, music legend. Uh, Victor Waifu. Yes, Victor, Victor Waifu. Waifu. Yes, yes. People like guitar, guitar boy. Yes. When, when did that happen? Um, Saturday, 22nd. Really? Wow. Oh, my God. Okay. Wow. See, I, I, it's, a, I, it's a big, it's a big loss for the yes, for the is, country and the entertainment industry as well. Yeah, yeah. And for him yeah. to be the first honorable art and culture uh, commissioner in Nigeria says a lot too. Mm, mm, mm. Don't so, don't so so much. Yeah, yeah. So I I I know for a fact that uh, music is uh, music, drama, art, culture. Uh, cultural uh -huh. heritage and and so are, are all part of uh your, your the selling point for your industry so oh yeah tell me do you guys have uh uh events music uh drama art events that you use to promote uh, your your tourism. Oh yeah, we we have we have so so many for Lagos State. They just finished um, a stage drama. We took around different local governments. The Billy Queen. Um, the one in Ife. They have the Moremi. The Terracotta ah, at the yes. Fela and the you know African Queen, the uh, Kalafuta Queen. Yeah. So a whole lot goes on in the art and culture space. And thankfully, the likes of Bonner Boy, mm -hmm. uh, it shutting down O2 in record time. You know, I think they, they really put Nigeria on a, on a global scale now with yeah. their music. Yeah. Bonner Boy winning the, the Grammy and same with Whiskey in collaboration with Beyonce. If you look, uh, like 10 years ago, most of us would download on our on our MP3 player mm. foreign music. Yeah, but I count it now that we 
Nigerians even download foreign music anymore because we have so so yeah. much to yeah yeah to yeah. turn out now. And now you find out the rest of the West is doing collaborations with Africa with, uh, with uh, uh, African artists. Yes. Now, day before yesterday, Shazam said, um, "Essence by Whiskey is the number one on their their app for music." Interesting. Whiskey Essence with them, and then Justin Bieber had you know done a remix with them. We have Brandy with Tiba Savage, and now you know this brings joy to me because with the way they are selling the entertainment world to the rest of the world, it brings in with the culture. Now you find uh, celebrities over there wearing Ankara inspired uh, materials, dresses. Yeah. So it's a win win for the entertainment industry, the yeah. movie industry. Check on Netflix now, a lot of foreigners. I have white friends in the UK saying they like Aki Popo. People are downloading Nigerian movies, watching Nigerian movies on Netflix. Mm. So I think that's another angle that we need to invest more in. You know, use the, the the Nollywood to tell a positive story of Nigeria instead of all these ritualistic movies and four or nine <laughs> get rich quiz team. Now we can use some of these products to sell tourism. Yes. Look at um, the likes of um, uh, Game of Thrones. How many times do we have a Croatia on TV? But when they show the season five of Game of Thrones in Croatia, even the government had to beg tourists to calm down. As in, I see. let us. You know, they, it got to a stage, they had over, I think, 13 million in one year that came to Croatia just to see those medieval castles. And it got to another stage, the government had to beg tourists to stay away. <laughs> that they become a new stars, that the locals don't even enjoy their streets anymore. <laughs> everywhere they turn, there's one group of tourists coming off uh, a cruise liner. There are plastics everywhere. But for me, I would say that's the joy of tourism. A movie that can generate that traffic. Yeah. And the same thing we should be able to do with our well, entertainment. See, now, now, it's happening. For, now, for example, you mentioned some artists that are world renowned now. So, yeah. you guys in the tourism sector need to find, build collaboration with the people in the music industry, organize uh, 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 music festivals together so that you guys, I don't, I don't know how, how you do it, but that, so that the, 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 the music festival happening, maybe somewhere in Lagos, and then you guys can work together to make sure all the guests coming from Ghana, Togo, Kenya, South Africa will be well taken care of. We do that. Good. Well, I'm, good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy you have this kind of insight. You should be in Nigeria working tourism sector. <laughs> you have a very clear way about it. And it's true. You know, I, I appreciate your passion and I can see that you really know so much about how this well, thing operates. Well, I, I, That's why I, you see in Ghana, they have the Afrochella. Mm. In, 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 well, I'll say because of um, COVID, in December, from the 1st of December, it's one of the craziest and the longest carnival in Nigeria. Wow. And I think it's the biggest in West Africa, Calabar Carnival. Yeah. It starts from mm -hmm. January, uh, December 1st to January 1st. So like what you're saying, they have musicians, entertainment, Concerts, it's the biggest street carnival. The food, um, culinary tourism is showcased. So it's like that. And in Lagos State, too, you know, a hotel is always sold out. You have, if it's not one they call today, it's risky tomorrow. Is and that was the beauty of all this before COVID came. Yeah, there was a concert you must attend during the, the festive period. We down to Uyo, in Uyo last year, we were there for uh, Christmas in Uyo. It was sold out. It has never been done. The traffic to Uyo was, you know, crazy. Let's, let me put it that way. And these are the, the, the new things people should, you know, invest in because a lot of people won't travel. Yeah. Let's create this environment for them to enjoy. See, 
at a cheap and affordable rate. One thing is this, eh? if tourism experts across Africa work together with the music, art, entertainment industry, you can build a year long calendar to attract tourists from all over Africa and the rest of the world. That we, I mean, we have the opportunity to do these things and uh, it's time for entrepreneurs to start looking at what is available in Africa, you know? Uh, wow, because these things, these things are, 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 are going to be great, but we need people it's to true. invest in it. So, Michael, it's just... see, all these things we're talking about, about tourism, it's only yeah. possible. It is only possible when people feel secure. Okay. Sure. Now, I know I, I mentioned this to you when I when, when when we talked. You see, the story, the story I hear on the news and from people I know. Sure. What is going on? This this the insecurity in Nigeria is unprecedented and is scary. <laughs> From headsmen killings, kidnapping, political issues. I mean, how has these issues affected the tourism sector? I know how, how it, it has affected my 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 friends and fa family in Nigeria, but tell me how has it affected this the tourism sector and what are the leaders in the sector doing to handle it? You know, it will be it will be fair to say the security issues we have in Nigeria is just not not just about Nigeria a lot. It's global. Yes. Every other country has their own unique security issues they're dealing with. In the UK, you have the, the, the knife culture, you have all that as well. In South Africa, the same. But in Nigeria, well, I would say it's um, more geographical um, security issues now. Like the up north, is that one, there's nothing you can even do to whitewash. Or all that one, we know what is going on up north with the bandits, the Boko Haram, and all that insurgency stuff. But generally speaking, I would say everywhere in Nigeria is unsafe. Yeah. There are still places that you can go, you can travel to, and safety sometimes it's um, a big issue to even to even discuss like this, but. The, the little we can do as a tour operator is to map out the safe zones, like the, the embassies, they, they churn out different travel advisors and put out bulletins to their to their citizens saying, don't go to this. This year is level three of um, terror threats, incidents and all that. So we know it's a, it's a big issue. But the first thing anybody tells you is, oh, Nigeria, they'll kidnap you. Oh, Boko Haram, do this, that one. We, we get that every day, but we can't live in, in fear for the rest of our lives. People go to Mexico, people go to Colombia, even with, them, with their, their, their high rate of kidnapping. People still go for vacation in some of these countries. But I would like people to just paint it like Nigeria is a no-go area. I live in Nigeria. I travel extensively around the, the country, and I know where it's safe, and I know where I wouldn't even go for a million naira. <laughs> that's the honest truth. I was telling you about the statistics I saw on CNN about America. 
Yeah. In the last, from the last um, January to the sixth month, they've had over 284 mass shootings, 332 deaths from this issue, 1,182 injuries within just a state of six months. But still, you'll find people will give an arm a leg to get a visa to the States. And every day you still have international arrivals from people coming in. Families are still relocating to Nigeria. There are still expatriate communities growing by the day in this country. Because they can still play around the security issues. You know where to go, you know where not to. You know where to hang out. You know, you don't make yourself, you know, a target by being in the wrong place at the, at the wrong time. So these are all the, the security measures we put. And for some of us, when we do um, out of state travel, mm. we use police security. We mm. provide security. We, we know the destinations we are going. We've mapped it out. We alert the, the authorities of that state, you know, and we tell them we are bringing in a group. And, you know, sometimes they even provide their own security just to make it comfortable for, for their guests. Because if they go without that experience of a memorable time, how would they refer somebody else to come? Yeah, yeah, they cannot. So we, we, can't, we, we can't rule out the security issue. We can't, we can't rule it out. Uh, I won't be I won't be honest if I say yes, we are hundred percent safe in Nigeria. We're not, but it is something we can still manage. Okay, okay, that's fair enough. So we understand the security issues. Uh, we understand COVID. Uh, we understand maybe funding for the industry. What other major challenges do you guys have in this in uh, this sector of the economy that you you feel needs to be handled pronto? Investment opportunities. Okay. Investment like, opportunities. like what? Uh, they, uh, uh, let me speak for myself as top operator. The the biggest challenges for our sector now, apart from the security, is infrastructure, okay. infrastructure, road network. Because like before, if you have to do a trip from Lagos to Abelkuta to take your guest to Lumoro, yeah. it would have taken you maybe like 45 minutes to mm -hmm. an hour drive. Mm -hmm. But now with the major road, they're fixing on that axis, you might spend two to three hours. God. And that translates to the cost of logistics. Yeah. Before you can do a, a 28 seater bus, maybe for 40,000. Now they're charging between 80 to 100,000. So in in that kind of um, arrangement, you spread the cost on your on your on, on your, your clients. On your clients, because you're going to be giving them meals, um, souvenirs, the tour, entrance fee, all inclusive in all this. They are providing security. So at the end of the day, you know, your your, your the chunk of your revenue goes on logistics. Yeah. Thank God they've they've created the rails now that travel between Lagos to Abel uh, Ibadan. Yeah, which is really nice. If you're going to Badagri on a normal day, you'd have spent maybe one to one and a half hours. Now you might spend five hours. So most times now, wow. some of us access. But I agree, but I agree here. By boat. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. You know, they've been on that road fixing for the last maybe five, ten years. And that happens to be a border town, you know. And, and that's, that's internally you know, within the states. Yes. Wow. Uh, we've, heard we've heard stories of people, friends dropping their, their loved ones at the airport and yeah. trying to get back to the island. And the person called from London saying, I just landed. And you're still in traffic. You're not even on the island yet. <laughs> six hours flight. Yes, it has happened. Um, that's a six-hour flight. Hold, on, hold, hold, on, hold on, Michael. See, what Michael just talked about has been 
a major issue for Lagos in particular for the last over 20 years. Okay. When I was in Lagos, there was the I must say was there the, the, the been several days when the whole state is on lockdown. When I say lockdown, traffic jams are everywhere. See happens. See a trip that would take you 20 minutes. 20 minutes would take you 12 hours. I'm not joking. See, for me, I've said this several times, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm challenging our economists, our doctors, okay, the experts, to tell me why can't these people who are experts, psychologists from our universities, from University of Lagos, come together, sit down, an economist, a psychologist, a, uh, a doctor, sit down and write a comprehensive article to tell okay. you what the, the effect of you being on, in traffic for hours on end to you as a human being, your, your men, mental structure, the effect, the, the, echo, the effect on the economy of the state. And this happens at least once or twice every month, right? More than once or twice. Okay, okay. I, I mean, I'm being, I'm being generous. Yeah, oh, uh, you're not. So, 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 that's why I pulled off the road. Exactly. So you, you, you have your lunch, you have your dinner. On the traffic. road. And you see what you're saying now, Ekene, what you've said now is what I and a lot of friends are selling now, wellness, wellness packages. You know why? Average Nigerians commute eight hours daily. Half of your productive um, hours, hours of the day on the on traffic. driving. So I look at people when they say they go out nine to five. Did you really work nine to five? Were you productive nine to five? You're driven for four hours in the morning going to the island. You've come back another six hours. Have you really worked half of the time? Now you're finding young men at 45, dying. 40, having stroke. Dying, slumming, and dying because the stress level has gone out. You, you don't even need to be a rocket scientist to figure the wellness of average Nigerians now. You have the road rage, you have the harassment by traffic uh, officers. You get home or you get in your office, there's no light. You can hear the sound of generators everywhere. You come back home to no light, then generators. So, how do you think people even have any, any rest? So I, that's what I suggest, if you go on my LinkedIn and Instagram, I'm always suggesting places they can go. Lakwe, go to Obudu Mountains, where you just go and sit with nature. You need to rejuvenate when you walk in Lagos. You, need, you, you, you just deserve a break. You know, go somewhere quiet, go to the airport, go somewhere very quiet and just unwind. Because every day you see people looking all stressed out. 30 year old looking like 40 because you drive and drive. Thank God we are even driving automatic. Remember those days of manual? Yeah. And then you're pressing the clutch every other 10 minutes. And then you are in between having muscle pull to deal with. So it's just not working. It's just not working. So, like, averagely before, like four, four years ago, you could averagely do a city tour of Lagos with the thing six, six, seven hours. Minimum tour of Lagos, I'm telling you about, we start from Lekki, um, from Lekki Axis. We go to Madame Nike Art Gallery. We go to Lekki Art Markets. 
for lovers of souvenirs and Ankara inspired, whatever, women go there, buy different fabrics. Then we go to Lekki Conservation, spend another two hours, maybe end up at Boca Hort or Terracotta. But with the traffic now, sometimes some of the clients will be like, just take us back to the hotel. We'll continue tomorrow because of wow. the, the traffic. I think our traffic should become a tourist attraction too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know why? The days I've had uh, foreigners and they'll be like, they actually sell macheries. They sell cutlass in the traffic. Shouldn't they be arrested? Oh. And somebody's see, selling exactly. raw meat. Somebody with a knife selling raw meat and inside the traffic are pricing. Some have even come up with jokes to say you can cook your soup while in the traffic because <laughs> they're selling pepper, onions. You can call somebody, please let me just take that our soup. Go and grind it to that mama day. Make it back to the car or somebody cook it for you on the road. Uh, it is that bad that in the traffic you can prepare your own meal because you find everything in the traffic. Somebody selling a, a, a throw pillow. Somebody selling a pillowcase. So why can't you just sleep in your car? <laughs> so I think part of our traffic will become a tourist attraction at some point. Wow. See, this is I I I just said I'm challenging all the experts. See, I I say this, okay? Maybe I'm I'm wrong, but I'm waiting for somebody to tell me I'm just that stupid. See, I want our experts to show their expertise. Okay, you can't say for me. I say this all, all the time. Just because you are a a professor in a university in the 21st century your work is not in the university the work your work as a professor is to educate the public okay uh -huh. so uh -huh. so uh -huh. your work uh -huh. with the student in school is just a minor part of your work in this era your work as a, as a professor, a university professor, is to educate the public, okay? So I expect our professors to come out. I mean, we have been going through this traffic issue for decades. Oh. So we have a lot of data, okay? At least we should have. Uh -huh. We should have yeah. at least... 20 years of data to show. So if all these people I just mentioned come together and write extensive articles, maybe up to 10 articles, they can show the public, hey, the way you drive, the, 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 the downfall down driver, the way you drive is reducing your lifespan by three years, by five years. And this will, will have an effect if these guys understand that their work as a university professor is not in, in the university anymore. Anyway, I'm done with okay. that. Okay, mm. I'll say this. Okay. It's not like we don't have intelligent people to solve some of these issues. But mind you, majority of what is done in Nigeria is politically based. See, I, I would say I would say this. Yes, we are. So they purposely just don't want it to work. Okay. Because they feel well, well, if it works, oh, hold somebody on, hold else on. will take the glory or one party will see, claim they made see, this thing see, go away. Oh, uh, see, uh, 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 that's uh, another, another topic. See, because for me, I don't personally believe the, the political system we run is to our own benefit. But I will leave that to another time. You know, Lagos State is, Lagos State is surrounded by water. 75% so yes. of Lagos is water. Yes. Why don't we invest in the waterways? Okay, that's... Imagine yeah. that. Yeah. If we open up the waterways, why would we mind about driving for six hours when you can do a boat ride on Lagos? From the island, from the mainland to Ikoyi in 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. This, these are issues that we need to deal with, okay? And, but then the first thing is this. 
the dons, the, the so-called experts need to make, make the case. We don't expect a politician to make the case. The, Never. the, the politician is not an expert on, tra uh, on transport. Okay? There's somebody in the University of Lagos, in Lagos State U University, who is an expert on these issues. Okay? So, they need to make the case. It's when they make, make the oh. case and the people read their writing and they say, wow, this is true. And then the people will start harassing their politicians. That's how oh. things are done. Okay? So, in a better, in a thinner climb, not well, in Nigeria. See, <laughs> see, see, it, see you need to put that in. For, for, no, in, for me, I, I disagree. I disagree with, with that. See, somebody needs to start it. Okay? And I believe our don'ts need to start it. Let's leave that one. Leave that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Michael, it's been nice to have you on the po podcast today. Thank you very much. So, so we have, you have talked about so many things about the tourism industry. So, what's your vision of the tourism industry in Nigeria and Africa in the next uh, 20, 30 years? I, I, can't, I can't hear you. Hello, can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, I can hear you now, yeah. Did you hear my question? Yeah, I think, uh, I think the last part I heard was about um, my vision for... Yes, I say the vision in 20, 30 years, what's your vision for tourism, Nigerian, Nigerian and African tourism in the next 20, 30 years? In the next 20 to 30 years, I think Nigeria is going to be the biggest travel destination in sub-Saharan Africa. Okay. You can write this down. Okay. With a crop of young entrepreneurs in the tourism sector, with the kind of things I've seen them do using technology and the passion they have for for the industry, I think Nigeria is going to be the biggest, biggest travel destination in the okay. world. Look at our coastal line, the beaches now, they're all looking like Maldives to Miami. And with a, with a crop of investors coming up now, investing in all these properties, there's a whole lot of new things coming up. And I honestly say this with all sincerity, if we keep up at this pace and get vibrant young governments like really interested in this sector, like our governor and I in Lagos State, he has really shown tremendous support for tourism. I think he's a big lover of tourism itself. If we have this kind of movements within the, the, the government sector in all states in the federation, Nigeria will be the biggest hub for any destination in Africa. Okay. We're already halfway there. Okay. Okay. Nice to now we you know we are the entertainment giants of Africa now. Yes. Yes. We are the fashion district, the best music, parties music sector in, in, the, in Lagos in Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah, the film industry, those things are, are... So we just need to get it right, and the rest is history. The security, and then the ease of traveling to Nigeria. That is another key issue. Mm. The ease of getting into Nigeria, ease of getting a visa. And mm. then when we now talk within the continent, the ease of traveling within Africa is another major, major issue. I think by now we should be talking of uh, ECOWAS, visa that you don't have to queue or wait to get visa just to go to another African country. By the time we have all that um, uh, red tape bureaucracy thing reduced, then you see a lot of migrations within the continent. Why shouldn't we travel within Africa? 54 African countries and we don't even know our neighbors. Shouldn't we wake up tomorrow and say we are going to Gambia or we are going to Kigali? Yeah. So by the time we start spreading this money within Africa, the economy of Africa will grow. I agree. We are large enough, we are large enough to create a commonwealth for, for everybody in Africa. We don't even need foreigners to come. 
in in tra travel within Africa is enough to sustain Africa. So we have the food, we have the numbers. Yes, that's true. So thank you very much, uh, Michael. The future is Africa. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see the progress of the uh, tourism industry in Nigeria. And uh, I would, uh, I would uh, follow you. I'll continue following you Thank on you. LinkedIn uh, to see what is ha happening. And once I'm coming to Nigeria, you hear from me so that we'll, we'll I'm going plan, to be your personal we'll plan, concierge. We'll plan, we'll plan <laughs> yes, we we'll plan uh, uh, my, my movement. Yeah, I want to see so many yeah, things in Nigeria. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so, so I much. I take this. I am honored. I'm, I'm very, very happy. I feel privileged. And I look forward to listening to a lot of your podcasts as well. Good. Yes. Good. I've been following all that one now. Good. Thank you so much. I'm Thank you. Happy Thank to be here. All right. Thanks. Take care. Bye for now. Yeah. Bye bye. Listen or watch more episodes of Think Big for Africa podcast with new guests every week. Subscribe to ensure that you are notified whenever new episodes are available.